Today's Bible reading is from Ruth 4. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. When the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took 10 of the elders of the town and said, sit here, and they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Elimil Elimek, sorry. <laughs> I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy in the presence of these cedars here and in the presence of the elders of the people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not tell me so, I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I'm next in line. I will redeem it, he said. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth the Moab Moabites, you acquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. At this, the kinsman redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now in the early times in Israel for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it, <laughs> and gave it to the other. This was the method for legaliz legalizing transaction in Israel. So the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself and remove his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today you're witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Mahlon. I have also acquired Ruth, the Moabites, Mahlon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town's records. Today, you're witnesses. Then the elders and all those at the gate said, we're witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together build up the house of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrat, Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offsprings of the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went, then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous through Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better than you, had better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Raomi took the, ch the child, laid him in her lap and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the son of David. This then is the family line of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nachshon, Nachshon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, Boaz the father of Bed, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David. Thank you, Maya. Well read. There was indeed some confusion this morning. Uh, I was leader of the day, so not everything was prepared as uh, used to prepare. So thank you for standing in. Great. Well, um, sermon on number six in the series, the summer series, Ruth and the Providence of God. Um, will be one more sermon that's next week but it will next week will be more topical on the topic of marriage especially intercultural marriage and Ruth Ruth and intercultural marriage so we'll look in it's it's more the the occasion and and we'll look into a few things of about marriage as we read in in uh, the book of Ruth um, but I assure you that it will be relevant for um, people who have uh, who are married in the same culture and it will also be relevant to singles and it will be relevant to young people and teenagers so um, next week on um, marriage um, already 
but especially those who have an intercultural marriage, I would really uh, invite you to be here in church or to log in. But today, chapter four, and um, chapter four is, um, let me just uh, just give a, a quick overview because it's it's the, the, the story of uh, Elimelech and Naomi and Elimelech and Naomi. You can stop the not not yet the PowerPoint. So um, Elimelech and um, Naomi. There was the the famine in Bethlehem, and they moved to Moab, and uh, with their two sons. And uh, Elimelech died, the two sons died um, after they married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. And then Naomi returned to Bethlehem when the famine was over with only one of the, her daughters-in-law, and uh, that was Ruth. And they were poor. So we read in chapter two uh, about um, Ruth gleaning. Um, so try to get some food. And then Naomi had this great plan and we looked at that yes, uh, last week. The great plan, yes, uh, we are poor, but there are laws in Israel that when you are a widow and um, there is nobody else uh, to continue the name and, and to be uh, to own the land, um, then the next thing kin in, in the family uh, is invited to marry the widow. Well, and Naomi had this beautiful plan which we studied last week, and now the plan is realized, and that's what we read here in chapter four. And it starts there, um, the town gate, that's in the first verse. Boaz went up to the town gate, that's the meeting place and the place for administration of justice. Um, that was in these days the, the place to be. And then it says, when the king's man redeemer, or depending on, on your translation, uh, um, the uh, guardian redeemer in other translations, but the Hebrew says hine, which is behold. And I'm sorry that it's not there in the NIV because that's exactly what the author of the book of Ruth wants to communicate. Well, Boaz was just sitting there in the gate and now that is a coincidence. Just when he was sitting there on that day, immediately the, the day after the night with, uh, with Ruth and the, and there comes the, wow, as if he knew that he should be there because Boaz wants to talk to him. Behold, the guardian redeemer, the kinsman redeemer. Was it coincidence or was it as the, the, the theme of the whole series is, is this providence, providence of God? And then in the next verse, in verse two, Boaz took 10 of the elders of the town Elders are charged with jurisdiction in with jurisdiction in family matters, and we can read that in Deuteronomy chapter twenty-five, verses seven to nine. The elders need to um, be there and um, make sure that everything, um, according to family matters, is is done as it is there in the scriptures. Well, then we continue in the verses three to six. Um, Boaz begins to talk to uh, this guardian redeemer about land, land purchase. But it's not mentioned before. And we get all sorts of questions, all sorts of questions come up as we read this. All right, so there was land. Um, why did Ruth have to glean? Couldn't she go to her own land? Or they're all, it's, it's, and, and there are a lot of theories what had happened to the land. And if you look at the commentaries, they have all sorts of theories. But I believe all this seems more like Boaz tactics. I think that is the most important thing here communicated in the story. Yes, 
There will be all sorts of explanations, what about with the land, etc. But what it makes clear is that God, God's providence is expressed through the outworking of our free human choices, decisions and responsibilities. Boaz is free. He takes his responsibility. He has this plan. Naomi had a plan, but Boaz had a plan. And the plan that he had, all right, first make it attractive to the kinsman redeemer. And then, well, say, well, if you uh, purchase the land, you, you should also marry Ruth. Oh, I can't do that. So... Obviously, Boaz had thought about this, and we think about Boaz. Who is Boaz? Did he, did he not endanger his land? All sorts of questions that cannot be answered, but obviously there are many, many theories. But it's not important to think about all these theories, and you can read it, but it doesn't help you. Scripture is here not to give us all sorts of information and detail, but it's teaching. And what is the teaching here? The teaching is that God's providence is expressed through the outworking of our free human choices, decisions, and responsibilities. The teaching is also that the story of Ruth goes beyond legal duties and is all about loving kindness. All right? The kinsman, guardian redeemer, was not obliged to buy and to marry, nor was Boaz obliged to do this. There was this, there is this, it's, it's, it's voluntarily in a way, that's how it's presented here in Ruth. Yes, there are laws that make it possible, but you're free to do it, yes or no. There's no, no death penalty, you're not sinning if you're not doing this. But in the story of Ruth, the author, the Holy Spirit, wants to communicate to us that in the end, it's about loving kindness, God's loving kindness, expressed through us who are called to be like him. And then the verses 7 to 10. By the way, when we think about this guardian redeemer, this kinsman redeemer, the name of this first uh, guardian redeemer is not mentioned. I'm going to talk about name in, and names in just a moment. But there are a lot of names. The names of Elimela, Kilion, Mahlon, they all come to life through Boaz's redemption. But his name is not mentioned. No, because he's not really part of God's story. Well, and then the last 10 verses, the verses 11 to 22. First of all, the verses 11 and 12, there's the threefold prayer. Um, the prayer um, uh, first for Ruth and then for Boaz and thirdly for the family of Boaz. A threefold blessing. May, may God bless you. And then in verse 13, Boaz took Ruth and um, she became his wife and the Lord enabled her to conceive. And she gave birth to a son. Remember that Ruth had been married to Mahlon in the past and there were no children. And what, what was wrong? And nowadays when, when, when you want to become pregnant and it doesn't, you go to the hospital and you have all sorts of if you want, if you, if you opt for this, you can opt for all sorts of investigations to see, okay, what's wrong? And there's nothing, biblically speaking, um, there's the freedom to do this and, and, and to, uh, to look what can, in what other way can, can we get pregnant. As long as we always remember that in the end, New life is always a gift from God. Um, if, you are, if you conceive, then it is God enabling you. Exactly the same with, with all the medical, ethical um, um, issues. Uh, yes, we have freedom. We are 
made in God's image and his likeness. So there are a lot of things that we can do. But as Christians, we always say, unless you, Lord, build the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless you watch over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Yes, the Lord needs to enable. And then in verse 14, the women said to Naomi, praise to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous. Now, famous, the, the word famous here is um, in Hebrew is name. There are a lot of other words like, like for instance, um, uh, in verse 11, may you have standing in Ephrathah. Um, it's also the name. So, and, and I'm coming back to name, as I said, in just a moment. But here, may he become famous. And nowadays we think famous, then you're a celebrity. And uh, everybody knows you, and you're there in and, and, and the media, and uh, you are uh, well-known. Uh, in, in, the, in the Netherlands, they talk about a Biener, uh, a bekende Nederlander. Um, but in the Bible, becoming famous, biblically speaking, having a name means that there is meaning in your life. You are meaningful. Your life is meaningful through being part of God's story with Israel. Boaz and the child, Obed, um, you will be part of God's story with Israel in the end, uh, giving birth to the Messiah. And then verse 15, Ruth um, it's better to Naomi than seven sons. That's what the women say to uh, Naomi. And um, then the women, which is very special, they name him Obed. Um, Obed, the Hebrew word for uh, servant. And then Obed is not Ruth's son, but is Naomi's son. It started with Elimelech and Naomi, and it ends with does it end with Naomi and with Obed? No. Well, it ends with the genealogy. And the genealogy ends with David. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David. So when we see this chapter 4, uh, ending with the genealogy, we wonder, well, who, is the story, is it, is it about uh, Ruth? By the way, Ruth, her name is not mentioned by the elders in the verses 11 and 12. Um, Ruth is, is mentioned as the, the woman. Um, may, um, may the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home. Her name is not mentioned there. So then maybe Naomi is the most important because Naomi now has a son? Or, or is it really about David? Because he's the last, it's the, in the Hebrew as well, the last word in the story of Ruth. Well, the teaching of Ruth. One thing is clear, that there's no mention of living happily ever after. It looks like a very romantic story, and especially chapter 3, which we studied last week. It looks very romantic. Oh, beautiful there and in the evening, and I suggested even that people would, that, that, that somewhere they, they would make a, a Hollywood film of this. And I, I, there are a few movies, but not, not very uh, famous movies yet, not very, uh, but... That's not the teaching of Ruth. And it doesn't say, and oh, Ruth was happy. Oh, she's married again. Oh, great. And now, and they, she has a son. Oh, life is perfect again. There was so much suffering. And now, but now she is happy. Now she is happy. And now Naomi is happy. Oh, great. 
Oh, isn't this a wonderful life for Naomi? That's how we would write the story of Ruth. But that's not what we read in the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth is about the providence of God. The providence of God teaches us not so much about his love and care for us, but about God writing his story with Israel. We so much often focus on ourselves. Oh, I must be happy. Oh, now I'm happy because I'm married. Oh, now I'm pregnant. Oh, and you see, oh, God provides so that I can be happy. God is doing this for me so that I can. But the providence of God. Yes, his loving care is there for us. But in the end, it's not about our happiness. It's about God writing his story with the people of Israel and through the people of Israel with this world. This is God's world. There are many proverbs and there on the screen you will see references in chapter 16 verses 1, 4 and 9, chapter 19 verse 21, 20 verse 24 and chapter 21 verse 30 and 30. One. I just put them there. If you'd like to make a Bible study uh, on, on this, go to these uh, references. And if it's going too quick, uh, you can always look it up on the internet uh, on our website. You can look at the PowerPoint again. But I just want to highlight one of these, and that's on the next slide in chapter 19, verse 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. All these references in Proverbs talk about our freedom and our responsibilities and our choices, but that somehow God is working out his purposes through us. God is writing his story with mankind. Thank God. So what is the teaching? Teaching of Ruth, in writing his story with Israel, he calls men and women by name. And when they call by name, they respond. God is calling them, they say, here I am. Looking at name, the word Shem in Hebrew, the seven times mentioned in chapter one, two, and three, and then seven times in chapter four, seven times in the Hebrew, again, it's not always translated like that in the English. Um, and what is it? Why is the name so important here? Naming gives meaning and purpose. Nowadays, in the West, you think, I like this name or in the past, it was very often, and still in some cultures, it's still um, the tradition to name your child um, after one uh, of your forefather, your father, your mother, or granddad, grandmom. Um, but in the Bible, the naming has to do with God is writing a story. And who's important there? And those who are not in God's story like the first kinsman redeemer, the guardian redeemer. His name is not mentioned because it's not relevant. But what is relevant are the names again of Mahlon and Kilion and Elimelech who died and think, oh, everybody will forget. But God will not forget. That story will continue now through Boaz. Naming gives meaning and purpose. God is also writing his story through the church. The question is, are you in his story? Are you in his story? Maybe you think of yourselves as, who am I? My work is very insignificant. I only do this or that. You for help. Am I important in God's story? Yes, you are important in God's story when you cling to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Because when we talk about name, naming and having meaning, there is one who's given a name above all names. 
That's Jesus Christ. The name above all names. He is God's key to history with mankind. The key to history of Israel and through Israel to mankind. A name greater than any other name. And if you cling to Jesus, say yes, then the honor of his name is now transported to you. And everything you do through in his name, whether it's a prayer at home, whether it's caring for the poor, whether it's tithing and giving people, uh, needy people, uh, what they need and you do it all in the name of Jesus when you go when you're part of the church the body of Christ the church is the body of Christ you're being part of the body of Christ that's having a meaningful life when we look at our our world we uh, people tend to think if you're meaningful life if you if you are um, high educated and you have great responsibilities and maybe you have a high position in, in, in the company that you work and, and you are important to people think, oh, there's the boss or, oh, there's the professor in, 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 in the university. Oh, there's the rich man who does a lot of things. But that's according to worldly standards. But in church, we preach the kingdom of God and that's a different kingdom. And the values are different. And what is important in life? What has eternal effect? What has eternal meaning? Well, cling to the name above all names, above all professors, above all the wealth in the world, above all the celebrities, the one name above all names. Cling to Jesus and your life will be more meaningful forever than the world can ever give you meaning i'd like to close with with one of these beautiful verses in first corinthians chapter 8 verse 3 and it's there on the screen the man who loves god is known by god the man who loves god is known by god Ah, I know you. God calls you by name because you love him. You love God. And you think, okay, where does this start? Does it start with my love for God? No. That's what we learn in 1 John chapter 4. We love because he first loved us. But as soon as we respond with love, then God knows who you are. He calls you by name. And we read even in Revelation chapter 2. Is it verse 14 or 17? Something like that. That you'll receive a new name when you see Jesus. Have meaning in life. Meaning in life. He knows you. What am I doing? Well, as you love God and, and, and express your love uh, to God in all these small things and the world thinks well you're insignificant you're small you who are you but god says i give you honor the honor of my son of whom i have said you have a name above all names above all above all powers above all kings above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of men you were here before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you are worth. Crucified, laid behind the stones, you lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of us, me, 
What? You called me by name. And you desire to give us meaning in life. Let's just have a moment of silent reflection and then Elmer will lead us in singing this song above all. Heavenly Father, as we are going to sing this song, familiar song for many, maybe all of us, may we sing it as a new song. I worship you, Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, given the name above all name because of your love, your suffering on the cross of Calvary, your death your resurrection, because you thought of me. Amen. Above all power, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here. Above all kingdoms, above all souls, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no Above all 
Silma for a wonderful song and this is our offering time uh, I request uh, Alvin or Sarah can you pray for the offering let us pray Lord we thank you who you are Lord you have given us so much Lord you have given us uh, jobs and income Lord you give us houses Lord, and so we're so grateful for all these gifts, Lord. Now we have a chance to give back to you, Lord. Lord, so the, for the for your kingdom, Lord, so the gospel will be spread. But I also think of the gifts uh, of talents and strengths, Lord, in us, that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, I think of uh, people that, are, that have musical talent, Lord. Also, Lord, people that are uh, connect well with children or people that are good at teaching, Lord. And, I just, uh, and also, Lord, people that are good at listening or encouraging. Or praying, Lord, for others. I just pray that you uh, that we prayerfully look at these things, Lord, and that we uh, were able to find a place here at IBC Eindhoven, Lord, that uh, we would fill the gaps here in the body of of Christ. And I just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, thanks, Alvin. So the people are in online. Can you can uh, see the ticky uh, QR codes? You can just scan the QR code and then. Do your offering and all the people at church there are the offering bags also the qr code in the offering bag and you can also scan the qr code over there so in the meantime so so it's an intercessory time and we are going to do our uh, prayers and if you have any prayer request you can uh, just share so people at church uh, if you want to pray for anything special or anything you have any prayer request you can just uh, shout out and uh, yeah yes Matil. Thank you for your focus on the, uh, the church, which uh, lost a lot of time and effort. 
Yeah, uh, Mathil uh, in church mentioned about Anita. Congratulations to her for finishing her course. And also let us keep her in prayers. Uh, they were recently blessed with a boy, I think, well, baby. Yeah, left gifty. And so let us continue to keep her in the prayer. And any other prayer request here from church? Or from online? No, right? Okay, then let us pray. So I would encourage, uh, yeah, maybe you can just, uh, if someone want to pray from church or online, you just uh, unmute yourself or you can just pray here. After one or two minutes, and then I will pray and finish. Heavenly Father, thank you for the people of Israel, a people like all other peoples. We often behave like other nations and peoples and make mistakes. But you have chosen Israel and you have written history through Israel. And we are here together in as a church worshiping the king of the jews the messiah of israel and we give you thanks for for the people of israel thank you for the the book they wrote our bible a jewish book and we pray for the people of israel at this moment we pray, dear Lord, that you will continue to write history through your people. As you have, are writing your history through the church. Because in the end, it's not about Israel, it's not about the church, it's about your creation, mankind. Fulfill your promises. Lord, there are so many big problems, crises in our world today the refugee crisis, the climate crisis, the pandemic, the unbelievable big gap between the rich and the poor, wars. There's so many, many problems. But we as a church, we believe that you who started with humanity, that you will end it and it in the end it will be and they lived heavily after ever after but it will be your doing and that's why because we are so certain about that we can always sing whatever the circumstances but as for now we pray we pray for the people of israel we pray for um, the surrounding countries, so often the, there is uh, injustice and, and deaths with the Palestinians and the Arabs. We pray for your peace to come. We pray for the coming of Jesus. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Uh, let us continue to worship him so let us continue to praise him he has done a lot of things in our life he died for us his love is everlasting yes lord we are giving all the honor all the praise to you alone heavenly father thank you for this wonderful fellowship wonderful morning you have given to us lord Especially, we pray for today's message, Lord. Thank you for the plan that you have in our life. Thank you for choosing us, Lord. 
Thank you for the love. Yes, Lord, in your journey, we are part of a small dust, but still you've chosen us. Thank you for that, Lord. Especially we pray for our Chai Chai BC, especially here in the people. And uh, please be with us, Lord. Please bless each and every one of here, Lord. I also especially pray for the people who are sick. And please touch them, give them the healing, Lord. I also pray for the people who are looking for jobs and having problems in their families. Yes, Lord, please be with them and then help them, Lord. You are the only provider for us, Lord. There are a lot of challenges in this during pandemic time, but still you are our provider. Help us, Lord. Please be with us and continue to bless us. Especially we pray for all the fellowships in our church. Especially we also pray for the new people, Lord. And please be with them and then help us to uh, continue to worship you as a single soul, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the last week, Sunday's special evening that we had. Such a wonderful blessing, Lord, to meet and greet a lot of people, especially new people and also the IBC members. Yes, Lord, help us to continue to focus on you in that manner in coming days and help us to as a church and uh, help us the plan to worship you lord we need to go with a physical church plus we need a lot of things and arrangements to know needs to be done for that lord help us and arrange help us lord i also pray for all the missionaries in our church we support lord especially i pray for anichi kuwasa paul and Karun and also Jeanette Cook, please be with them and help them in their missionary works, whatever they are doing, Lord. It's a great work that they are doing. Please help them. Please provide them the needs. Please give them the good health. We also see that Anab Anishikiwasa is here uh, again in Netherlands. Please be with her and help her in the all the health situations, oh Lord. I also pray for our pastor Gilbert, please be with him, continue to bless him and continue to guide him and continue to help him, Lord, and whatever he is doing, especially also with the new home. I also pray for the children. They already started the one week of school here. Please be with them, continue to help them. And then, and especially with the new, a uh, lot of kids are going to the new groups and new uh, colleges and things like that. Lord, please help them and focus, help them and uh, in their studies also, Lord, help them to stay safe. Yes, Lord, we continue to be with us and continue to help us. And uh, we also pray for all the upcoming plans for our church IBC. Please be with us and guide us. Especially I pray for this coming week, Lord, and uh, a lot of people and we are entering into the new week. Please be with us and uh, bless all our plans. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, our oh Lord. We help us to focus more and more on you alone. I give all the glory, honor, and to you alone, Lord. I pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we are going to have our closing song. I invite Elmer. Let's stand up, sing our last song, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah.
for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see His face. There I'll serve my King forever in that holy place. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. I'll just remain standing. I um, just want to give a big thank you for um is that it yeah i need to watch the camera thank you uh, samuel big thank you for all those who uh who are serving us thank you elmer for leading us in worship um just a reminder for those of you who are a bit um anxious about uh, of a small building like this we have excellent ventilation the, it goes up there are ventilators as as it were sucking the air and blowing it out outside so there is good ventilation here um, and we are looking into options for other places where we may worship because uh, the building is really getting too small especially for our kids so do remember um, the team in prayer and if you have some ideas please contact Owen one of our deacons or just uh, write an email to leadership uh, at ibc-eindhoven.com um, just want to mention also i was so glad to hear about um, anita um, she was away because of her internship for a long time but uh, i just heard that she graduated um, anita originally from ghana married to justin originally from cameroon and now they have this beautiful gifty and um, they were planning to Plan the dedication uh, soon after her um, uh, graduation. So we're looking forward to see them here. Father in heaven, and we pray for Anita as we hear from Matilda that she's very tired. It's been hard work. She has worked hard. Thank you for the support of her loving husband, Justin, and, and uh, the family at home. And we want to pray for her, give her new strength. And uh, thank you, Father, that we may pray for each other with gratefulness because we are part of your body, Jesus Christ. And through your church, you're giving meaning to our lives, meaningful lives for the world that is in need of Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing us. And May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, enjoy your Sunday. Uh, for those who you who are online, you're welcome to join a breakout group. And those of you here in church, um, we haven't started coffee, uh, melon, cooking, as we would say in the Netherlands. Um, but uh, you're welcome just to connect with each other and uh, hope to see you next time again. Enjoy the Sunday.